Welcome back to the Heart of Giving. We have two special programs for you today. As I've said so many times, the nonprofits really give the soul of Long Beach. It is the part of the Long Beach that is human, that takes care of the problems, takes care of the people, and also enlightens them. And today we have a special segment. We have someone with us who's the executive director of the Long Beach Museum of Art, which is a foundation. Ron, I'm so glad that you're here. It's really, really nice to see you and nice to have you here. And tell us, uh, you've been the executive director how long? Um, almost eight years. So I, I, I really can, can't believe that. That has gone <laughs> so fast. It has gone by, it's, you know, a snap of a finger. It's and been. the Long Beach Museum is a treasure yeah. for the city of Long Beach. And yeah. I don't think everybody knows about it. No. And it needs to know about it. Yeah. I want you to tell me where it is, what it does, and and what's there now. Okay. Well, well, as a museum, we're blessed with a really fabulous piece of property. I know it. I love that spot. Yeah, right on the bluff overlooking the ocean. Um, it uh, started a, as a museum in 1950 in the historic Anderson House, um, and it started building a collection at that time also. Mm -hmm. And it, then it collected contemporary um, Southern California and Long Beach artists um, for the past 64 years. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, in 2000, a new gallery pavilion was built, and that allowed us to kind of take it to another level. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't, it's interesting, but we have an international reputation, and I could be in Paris, like Tokyo, I can be in Rome, and people will know that know this museum. Is that right? Yeah. But yet there's a certain part of the population of the city that we need to reach out to that we can't. When you say they know to. about the museum, what do they know about it? What do they say is unique about it? You know, they, they recognize the value of the work that was done in the 70s and in the 80s with the video program. Mm -hmm. And it had a very active video art program during that period of time. And a lot of international artists came to work then. And some of the top artists and still living in Long Beach um, that worked there at that time um, are international superstars. Mm -hmm. So they know the connection to mm -hmm. that. But they also know that we started collecting in the 50s. And as the history of art is being written and the further we're getting away from it, the artists from the 50s, 60s, and um, early 70s um, really have come on to their own. There's a lot of research being done on them. They're mm -hmm. being recognized for being trailblazers and what they did. Mm -hmm. And as an institution that's that age and just how that was collection, how that collection put together is also a really interesting story. And, and do we have a permanent collection? We do, uh, we do indeed. We have, the city only has a permanent collection that is about 50% of the entire collection, um, which is getting a close to about 4,500 pieces. Mm. The, um, in 1984, um, a foundation was formed, um, Long Beach Museum of Art Foundation, and that foundation then um, took over management of the museum. Mm -hmm. So there's a collection that belongs to the city and to the foundation, mm -hmm. and we show them both, and we mine from both of those mm -hmm. with, our, with the exhibits mm -hmm. that we take. And, yeah. and how do you get your new exhibits, and who does that? Yeah, we have, um, well, fortunately on our staff, we have uh, Sue Ann Robinson. Um, she's our director of exhibitions. She's been there a long time. She's an amazing yeah, woman. Yeah, I know it. And um, she, as an artist, as an educator, mm -hmm. uh, she's worked nationally in many positions and started many museum educational programs. And she is, uh, her depth of knowledge and her depth of knowledge of the institution and the artist, so she's a tremendous gem. Mm -hmm. I, I, I look forward to working with her on a daily basis. That's and, great. Um, yeah, so, it's, so we, uh, we researched um, that. She, we look into the, um, the collection and we are able to pull works from that and really curate some wonderful shows. Uh, we also curate shows that are from outside of the museum's collection, of course. Mm -hmm. um, we always want to keep it fresh. We still want to show contemporary art from Southern California. Mm -hmm. um, we don't put a label on that as just being paintings. We show a lot of ceramics, sculptures, um, and decorative mm -hmm. arts. And so the, the collection has a lot of ceramics, a lot of wood, um, a lot of um, different medias that it, it collects. So it's, mm -hmm. um, it's a varied collection. But it is, we do have a nice collection in depth in each of those areas. That the, the new edition, which is yeah. not new now because it's been there many years, yeah. but the new edition that uh, uh, 
just fits in beautifully. I mean, what was done was done with the taste of the former yeah. work. Yeah, yeah it, it's a contemporary building, but it has a nice nod to the past. Mm -hmm. And the original Anderson home, which is a craftsman style home um, that was built in 1911, um, that house is a you know, beautifully shingled home um, that we care for also, as a, and it's a historic um, place. But the new um, structure, was designed by Frederick Fisher, and it was one of the first uh, museums that Frederick has done. Mm -hmm. He's gone on to do many more nationally, internationally. And th that particular structure, I think, um, worked well with the property. It was, um, um, it really enabled us to take another step up and, and to show larger exhibitions and show uh, uh, works by um, career artists that are mid-career mm -hmm. from Southern California that we can mm -hmm. pull in their work and do a nice um, retrospective of their work. It was work. really built as a viewing area. Area. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And um, the, um, uh, the things that you have there uh, change how often? Our exhibitions for us last about three to four months, mm -hmm. and which is pretty typical for museums. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it, um, they will go a little bit longer, but we will usually have three to four exhibitions happening at any time. Mm -hmm. um, one of those would be in our Toyota Children's Gallery. We work um, very closely with the Long Beach Unified School District. Uh, we are the fifth grade education component for them, mm -hmm. and we give our art, art education to I have a um, picture state landers. From that yeah, from a student. Yeah. You know, with, uh, wonderful. I just love the picture. It's when you see that clicking, and you see the kid that hits that, and the one life maybe that you hit that day. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know speaking to many artists, and I know myself, it was a teacher, and it was the right teacher, and they, you became focused on something, and you were encouraged to do that. Mm -hmm. Or it gave you one more path to coming back into learning the math. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, if I wave this basket mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. and I'm counting out this, then it makes sense that I'm now doing multiplication. And I'm now, you know, working on it. And so there are a lot of methods to, to get mm -hmm. kids to learn, and that, and that's you know a huge part of our mission. Indeed. And the building. Uh, didn't your foundation help with that? Yeah, they did. There was a capital campaign that uh, raised over seven million dollars. Oh my! Uh, yeah, Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And um, the there was so a, that was not city money. No, there was a three million dollar bond that sort of finished off the capital campaign, mm -hmm. and so it was um, the seven, three quarters of it was all paid for by private um, donors here within the city of Long Beach. It's a lot of money. Uh, oh, absolutely! Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely! Yeah. Well, that shows that the public felt it was needed. It was needed, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Definitely, you know, it's funny because in a, in a business, uh, you usually look at a 10-mile radius that mm -hmm. you're going to be drawing from. Um, our 10-mile radius, you know, it's half of those water. are fish and water. Uh -huh. and I think that a lot of businesses have that, that issue. And we work, that works against us, but it also works against, um, for us. Mm -hmm. um, but so our mission, and what I really want to do is to draw in all of Long Beach and mm -hmm. to bring Long Beach there. So we do a lot of outreach in a lot of communities. I wish we could do more, um, but, um, you know, as a nonprofit working with and, and, but you do order. have you do have things where you are, do have outreach into the schools. You absolutely, said, absolutely. And, and what what do they do? They come to the museum, or do they? We go to the schools initially to set the kids at ease, let them know what the experience is going to be like. We've worked with the teachers weeks before that. We then they come, and we make sure that we bring every student here. Uh, we had um, we only missed one school last year. And do they just visit once? Um, they visit once, or they can come back. We also mm -hmm. give them family passes to bring okay. their family passes back. But they come through, they visit. There's an art-making experience. There's an um, art uh, piece they get to take home with them. Uh, they also then have after visit uh, mm -hmm. visiting lessons that the teacher takes back to, and it continues to follow through. And so we're, we concentrate on the fifth grade, and that is all done through private funding. Mm -hmm. But we say no to any, we don't say no to any grade. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of third grades that come through. We have school districts outside. As, as, a, as their field trip. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we do weekend family art-making workshops. We work um, uh, some, during the summer, we've had summer uh, workshops for children, and we just the education department just continues to be really busy. Mm -hmm. And um, and the, you know, there's uh, the mission behind it and the and the growth behind mm -hmm. it that uh, they are looking for to happen. It, you know, we can see it happening, and mm -hmm. it's working. So, uh, yeah. The building, the, you know, the location, as you say, is just exquisite. Yeah. And during the Second World War, that building was used as the officers. 
club or the officer's yeah. spot. Yeah. And um, then after it was that, then it became the museum. There was a period, there was a short period where it was a, um, a private club. Um, um, oh, that's right. Club. It was the Pacific Coast Club yeah. until the Pacific Coast Club opened. Exactly. Yeah. For heaven's sake, yeah. I'd forgotten that. Yeah. And then it became the uh, an art center, and after that, and it quickly began uh, collecting and, and became a museum. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And uh, the facility is used a lot for other things. It certainly is. <laughs> we keep it, we try to keep it um, as open and available as we can. And we like to collaborate with other institutions within the city and different groups. Mm -hmm. um, but we also, um, since we have this fabulous spot on the bluff, we have Claire's Restaurant. And it's normally a, a restaurant is for the convenience of a guest, but it's become a destination in itself. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And with that, we also do a number of weddings, a number of, you know, we do bridal showers, we do dinners, we do corporate events. Mm -hmm. And so there's not that many places that you can have that kind of venue and that mm -hmm. kind of view. Um, within the city, and so we're and, really and it's for really that. The, the weddings and things are on the grounds. It's yeah. not necessarily in the restaurant. Right, that's no. entirely separate. <laughs> entirely separate. So the, yeah. that yeah. that grassy area between the two facilities, yeah. two buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that can be tented, and we can make. We and can it turn took that a long time to get good. parking. Yeah, parking is always difficult mm -hmm. for us, and as you know. It being a good neighbor, if there's ever an event that's over 60 people, we require valet parking for mm -hmm. anybody that's using that. Mm -hmm. So it, it, they can keep more cars in there, they can run cars down to the beach and mm -hmm. bring them up. So mm -hmm. parking is, is always an issue for us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and the the museum, when, it's, when people visit, is it, do you pay or is it free or? It um, is free to members, of course, um, and membership is a big part of any museum. Uh, we're free on Thursday evenings, okay. and we're free all day on Fridays. Okay. And through grants, through the LA County Arts Commission, and through their uh, James Irvine Foundation, um, they've um, been able to underwrite. I believe Marine Museum should be free every day. Yeah. And I think every I um, everyone should have yeah. access to that. Uh, so well. we try to get as much free time in there as we can. Yeah. Well, Ron, thank you so much. I mean, this this has gone really fast, and I'm I, so pleased that people know about uh, more now about the Long Beach Art okay. Museum, and it's between Cherry, or Juan Apero, and Redondo in that and stretch of Ocean Boulevard. Correct, and right on Ocean very Boulevard. Very good. You thank, bet. You thank you very much. Thank you very much for having you me. You bet. Yeah. Come right back. We have another good segment for you to see. <music> Welcome back. We're glad that you're here for our last segment of today. And it's really an interesting phenomena to be. Uh, it's not really a phenomena, but it is something that I thought there wasn't much need for. But boy, am I wrong. This is called Grandparents as Parents. And it's becoming more and more prevalent that this is a need in our communities that we really need to pay attention to. And today we have Madeline Gordon, who is the executive director, and Angelica Leva, who is in charge of their multi-service program, which you, you can tell your own title in a minute. <laughs> okay, but Madeline, let's start with you. Tell us how long you've been in existence and what you do. It really sounds so necessary all of a sudden. Well, I have to say first that it, we're a little bit of a misnomer. We're, we're called grandparents as parents, but we actually try to work with an entire group of people. There's aunts, uncles, relatives all over the place, not just grandparents that are put in the position that they have to raise a relative child because the biological parents can't or won't. Mm -hmm. Well, grandparents <laughs> makes you know immediately what you're talking about. That's right, yeah. and, and certainly the prevalence is uh -huh. grandparents. Uh -huh. That's the, the largest part. How long have you part. been in existence now? And we started in 1987, actually here in Long Beach and um, started as a very grassroots organization and remained that for almost 15 years. And then just the last seven, eight years that we've been able to expand, we now have 22 weekly groups meeting throughout the county. And the, the purpose is primarily to try to just connect families with each other, mm -hmm. help them network, give them some of the tools that they need to put their lives back in order mm -hmm. because the when it happens, it's huge. Mm -hmm. it, it, most people don't think about it until um, it happens to them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not aware that there may be a problem and suddenly there's a policeman at the door knocking and saying, here's your grandchild, either you take the child or he's going into foster care. Mm -hmm. And a decision could happen that fast mm -hmm. of needing to 
parent again. Yes, and you know, and and when they say grandparents, it could be someone that's very young, and it could be also a very elderly. Absolutely. That that all of a sudden have assumed a family that um, they needed to start all over. Yeah, the challenges are, mm -hmm. are exactly that. The, and when you say aunts and uncles, if that's if gra grandparents aren't available to do this, then it goes to other members of the family? It, it's not a really even a pecking order as much as who's available, who's uh -huh. willing, who's been found that uh -huh. would be able to take on that responsibility. Uh -huh. And it's, you were mentioning also uh, an older sibling. Yeah, we, we have right now a couple of them, but one 19-year-old that is raising her three siblings, the four of them were all in foster care, and then when she was 21, able to go, and she now has gone back, and um, not 21, she was 18, mm -hmm. able to then go back and assume responsibility and mm -hmm. take on the guardianship. And how do you take care of them? I mean, what, what, what services do you provide them? We think of ourselves as a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. the, the idea is when this happens to a family, there's a whole series of crises that may go on, and it's a matter of if they need help knowing that they need an attorney, if they need help with housing, this is often a major, major problem. Um, whatever it is, we're kind of a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. The backbone of what we do are support groups. Mm -hmm. And these groups are very educational. There's usually curriculums involved so that there's, there's growth and mm -hmm. people are not only you know, expressing what's going on in terms of their, their crises, but getting concrete tools so that they then are able to mentor others. Mm -hmm. um, a big part of our program is actually a social kind of a thing where we, whatever possible activity we can come up with to bring families together so that they don't feel so isolated. They mm -hmm. feel like and they- And they come with the children. They come with the children. Sometimes we do a little respite where the, the grandparents come. actually can get away for a little bit and uh, have some time for themselves. We, we may get tickets to the opera, or we may have picnics or big holiday parties. Mm -hmm. Angelica just oversaw a big one here in Long Beach with, with a number of our families. So anything we can. Like how many people are you serving right now? Grandparents as Parents right now is serving about 2,000 people, 3,000 people. Not just it's, in Long Beach? No, not oh. just in Long Beach. In it, the, the number of children being raised by relatives are about 330,000 in California. And the part that's the most confusing, we, we almost don't know how many families are, are raising grandchildren that just are kind of under the radar mm -hmm. and, and not known. Um, but it is an issue that started in the late 80s because mm -hmm. of the drug epidemic and has just continued to, to go. Does it escalate? Unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and for many of the families, there's very few resources to, that they don't know what to do. They don't oh, know yeah. where to go. Absolutely. And it's an immediate phenomenon to them. Yes. That's changed their lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but it, in the Long Beach area. <laughs> Long Beach area, I, I should have known that number and I don't know <laughs> that number. Right. But, but guesstimate that, you know, of our support groups that are going, there's two, two different ones going. One's, um, Spanish speaking, one's an English speaking. Mm -hmm. They meet on a weekly basis and the groups can vary from <coughs> as small as at times 10 mm -hmm. to grow sometimes 30 and 40. Mm -hmm. The holiday party had a couple hundred mm -hmm. people oh, that wow. attended and again these are a small part of the population mm -hmm. because we're kind of a well-kept secret. Okay, Angelica, <laughs> tell me what you do. <laughs> well, I'm the Multicultural Services Coordinator and as a coordinator I have my hand in quite a few things, but the fav my favorite things that I do, I uh, facilitate a support group here in Long Beach in Spanish, as well as one in Bellflower. And I also get to do crisis counseling with families and family counseling and individual counseling. So I see families from when they first come to our organization in a state of crisis usually. They just receive the children or uh, you know they're having issues with the social worker, mm -hmm. or they need help in understanding uh, what their options are in terms of legal guardianship and mm -hmm. adoption. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes I'll refer them to a support group to start getting the information mm -hmm. and feel supported by other people that are in the same situation as they are. And uh, I see how their situation starts to change mm -hmm. once they receive the resources, the information, and the support. And just knowing that there are other families uh, and they know them that are going through the same thing they are, mm 
uh, is great support. It's huge. Because you feel so alone when yeah, you have a problem like that. And it's so new, and the fact that it's escalating mm -hmm. is frightening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a center at the Edelman Children's Court, and this was, we started this in, in 2010, mm -hmm. where there's two full-time staff there that are available to anybody who's in the court to help them know how to get through the court system, mm -hmm. how to deal with That's very important. DCFS, mm -hmm. how to deal with the, the process. Um, one of the things that, that is kind of shocking is that grandparent doesn't necessarily have any voice in the court. If children mm -hmm. have been taken from, from the parents, they may go to court and not be able to say, I want, you know, this is right, this is wrong. And so the caregiver center that's there is open to just kind of give them some guidance in that way. How, how do people find you? Used to be just word of mouth. More and mm. more now it's, it's agencies that know we exist. Certainly the court has made a big difference in terms of knowing so what we're doing. So they can't call you on the telephone? Mm -hmm. They ODB. do. Okay. We actually get a lot of people that call. Some people just drop in. Our corporate office is up in the valley. Mm -hmm. But again, because we have weekly groups going on in all different places, people hear about it. And as a result, they may, they may come in that way or just mm -hmm. preferred. But we're so open. You have a facility here in Long Beach? We, we share. The Salvation Army opens okay. their door for us, oh, and uh, Spiranet opens their door so that we have me weekly meetings that are going on in both places. That's excellent. And it is. do you yeah. have volunteers that help you? Oh, yeah. Uh, we wouldn't have do? existed. What do they do? <laughs> actually, our volunteers do everything. From uh, We have some that ha are ra actually running groups. We have a PhD gentleman that comes in week to week. We have uh, people in the office, people that organize our social events, anything and everything. And so we're always open mm -hmm. and encouraging to And is it, is it like a, a training center also for uh, college students or for, yes, show me we, about that? Yes, we have right now 33 interns actually from three different universities from Cal State Long Beach, Cal State Northridge, and Cal State LA. Mm. And these are MSW interns, Masters of Social Work mm -hmm. students. Uh, and so they help uh, run our support groups, mm -hmm. they help make calls to caregivers mm -hmm. and offer support and organize different events as well. Oh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Do you want to give me your, the phone number for Long Beach? Yes. Well, it would be, there's there's two different, actually, I don't have it memorized. Do you know oh. the 562 <laughs> number? I know that's our 818, right. <laughs> there, there is a Long Beach number that maybe you'll be able to flash, or yeah. it's on the website. We, will. we and do that. Otherwise, that. the 818 is, everything funnels up to us. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the thing that, that, uh, that is so marvelous about what you do is that it brings awareness uh, so that there's not the stigma and there's not the fear yes. that these people feel. Uh, and it's so important for all of us to know that there is a place mm -hmm. yeah. where they can feel comfortable and actually get some help. Mm -hmm. because they feel alone. They do, so. they feel alone. And the stigma that you mentioned is yeah. huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it still is that the apple doesn't fall far from the yeah. tree, which is a horrible mm -hmm. thing. Oh, the drug uh -huh. epidemic erased any of the, the cause and effect in terms yeah. of parenting being, being the cause. Yeah. Um, if drugs are involved, yeah. it could be anything. Well, I thank you so very much. It was wonderful to have you, and it's it's something that we haven't talked about. We've talked about things for children and adults, but not necessarily grandparents, adults. So thank you very much for being part of our program today. Thank we you love for having you. Good. And I hope you learn as much as I do every segment, because things that are happening in the city, people don't even know about. But I get my referrals through the nonprofit partnership. They're the ones that provide the list of names and if you want to know some telephone numbers you would call the nonprofit partnership in Long Beach and they would help you. So we hope that you come back uh, at our next program. We thank you very much for being with us and remember there's the heart of giving. <music>